So guys, it's a Friday and it's time for another Unraid tutorial. Now a lot of people have contacted me recently and asked me to do some tutorials on installing Dockers in Unraid. So here's the first of a series of Docker tutorials and in this one we're going to be tackling getting Sab NCBD up and running. Cracky. SAB NCBD, or SAB for short, is a multi-platform open source newsreader that downloads Usenet binary posts. These are obtained from NZBD files, which you get from various NZBD indexing sites. Once installed, SAB can be accessed from any computer on your network, as it's managed from a web browser. And SAB is great, because as well as being highly automated, it can easily integrate with other tools such as SickBeard, Sonar, Couch Potato, etc. In this video, we're going to download and install it as a Docker on our Unraid server. Then having done this, we'll configure the software and add a Usenet provider. A Usenet provider is needed for downloading binaries from Usenet. I'll also show you how to integrate SAB into your web browser if you use Google Chrome with a Google Chrome extension. Right, so to use this on our Unraid server, we need to download a SAB Docker. To do this, you should already have the Community Applications plugin installed. If you don't have this installed, then I suggest you watch my video on installing the best plugins for our Unraid first. Okay guys, so just before we download the Docker, as this Docker downloads things from the internet, obviously it's going to need a share to put its downloads into. So if you don't already have a download share, then click onto Shares, and then go down to add share and call your share downloads and if you have a cache disk then put that on to use cache disk set that for yes and then click add share um, and then scroll down to the bottom you can put security on the share if you want to I'm not going to bother and just click done okay so now we've created our share we just need to map to it and then open the share and then inside the share we need to create two folders one called complete and the other one called incomplete okay so now we've got our share it's time to download the docker so we need to click onto the apps tab to access community applications and just type in sab as you can see there are a number of options to download you can choose any one you like, but just don't download it as a plugin as in here. The docker I use myself is the one by Binhex, so that's what we'll use for this tutorial. So just click on to add on the docker, and that brings us to the template for the container. So everything we can leave as default here except for one thing. The container path where the data goes to, that's set by default to be in the app data folder, and we don't really want to have it there. Where we want to put it is the share we just created for our downloads. So just click onto there and then browse to that folder. When browsing for your share, make sure you access it through user. And then click downloads. So after we set our data path, we just need to click onto apply and then it will pull the image down and install it onto our server. Okay, so when that's finished, just click onto done. And now we need to click onto the Docker tab and now you'll see that um, the Binhex SAB NZBD has been installed so we need to left click it and then click Web UI and that will take us to the SAB NZBD Quick Start Wizard so first we choose our language and then click Start Wizard and in this section we enter our chosen Usenet provider's server details and our Usenet account username and password now the Usenet provider that's advertised here is GigaNews but there are far better alternatives available. The provider I consider the best and use myself is Uweka, who are the most popular Dutch tier 1 providers with servers based in the Netherlands. For their top 100 megabit account, they charge 9.6 euros, which is about $10 a month. I'll also put a link in the description, which will get you 27 days of free access. So in the top here, we put our host address, which for me is this and then we put in our username and password and then if your host supports SSL check this box here and then click on show all and put the number of connections that your package has and for me that's eight 
and I then click on test server and then if everything's set up correctly it should say connection successful and then just click on to next rather than clicking the green button here which will give us this error here saying the connection is not private just close the page go back to your docker page and then just click on the web UI again and that brings us back to the SAB web management page so to get to the configuration we must click on the cog in the top right hand corner from here click on the general tab we can leave these options as they are as nothing needs to be changed here but you can change the web interface skin here if you're going to access this from a phone or tablet then I recommend using one of the glitter skins as they adapt to the size of the screen and the others don't a username and password can be added here so access to the web interface is secure if we go down you'll also see the API key here this is important later on as SAB only gives access to third-party programs that supply this key unless you disable it here which I wouldn't recommend you do okay so that's everything on this page that you're really going to need to change so if you've made a change on this page then click on to save changes SAB will now restart now you can see when we go to the web management SAB is actually asking us for a username and password so they're the ones I put in earlier okay so back to clicking on the cog and now this time we're going to click on to folders this is where we configure the user folders the first of which is the temporary folder this is the folder where Usenet binaries are downloaded to before they're completed it's important we change this location if we don't change this location then SAB will try and download inside your docker image which will cause you all sorts of problems so here we change the location to what we mapped earlier in the docker template the forward slash data which we map to our download share and then in here here's the folder we also created earlier the one called incomplete so select that and click accept now the next one we see here the minimum free space for temporary download folder you can set in here an amount of space that has to be present before the downloads will actually start downloading and then the next underneath here completed download folder this is the folder where the downloads that have completed are moved across to and again we want to map it to the data folder so click on to browse and go to the data folder and this time select the folder called complete and click accept now it's important to set the permissions for completed downloads here to 777 or else you'll not have permission to modify your downloads at all for example rename delete and move etc so it's important not to forget this this next folder the watch folder this is a folder that you can have sab monitor for NCB files to download and here is the watch folder scan speed you can set that to how many seconds between scans this next folder here scripts folder this is where you can keep scripts for SAB to process under certain conditions for example when an NCB is downloaded by Sickbeard a script can run to move the file to the correct location and then notify Sickbeard it is completed successfully or not but this won't be covered in this video we'll cover this in a future tutorial about Sickbeard and Sickrage and this, this here, um, you can put in here a password file full of passwords that may have the correct passwords for trying to unzip encrypted RAR files. Okay, so on the folders tab, that's pretty much all you need to know. So just click on save changes. And now we can move to the next tab, servers. Here you'll see the server that we set up earlier and you can click on add to add another server now it may sound strange at first as to why you'd actually want to add another server well the obvious reason is to have a backup server in case one is down but actually the main reason to add another server is so if the main one has missing articles they can be completed by your second server now I don't advise paying another monthly subscription to another Usenet provider for this but to buy a block of data from another server but when getting the second server it's important to make sure that it's on a different Usenet backbone to your primary one. The one I recommend is Usenet Farm and this works great with Eureka. Usenet Farm do a 500 gigs block of data for only 15 euros 
and that should last you a long time. I've had mine for over six months and I've still got plenty left. It does really make a big difference for files completing successfully more often. I'll also leave a link to the Usenet farm in the description. Anyway, if you decide you want to use a secondary server, so when adding the server it's just the same as when we added our primary server, you put in the host address, you put in the port number, the username and password, how many connections you have with that account, and the one thing you need to change is to make the priority higher than your primary server. So my primary server has a priority of zero, so this one I want to have a priority of one. So basically then it will try the primary server first for everything and any, any articles it can't find, it will then come to the secondary server and try and download them from here. So now we have the both servers enabled here, the primary one here and the secondary one here. So the next tab along here is the tab called Categories. And Categories can be used to run scripts when SAB receives an NZBD which has a category type. I use this myself for, for SickRage integration. Again, this is for a future tutorial. And switches, everything here really should be left as default. If you scroll down here, um, the post processing, you can, you can change various bits here to suit your needs. I tend to leave everything on default. And then for renaming, I like to replace dots in, in folder names, and I check that for replace dots with spaces in the folder names. And quota is exactly what it says it is. You can basically set a quota for how much to download per month or per day. And so that's the important things to look at on this section. So once you're happy with everything, just click on save changes. Now the next tab is sorting. And uh, what this tab is for is basically for sorting your downloads. I personally don't use this at all. I have my other tools like SickRage and Sonar sorting my downloads for me, but you may want to sort yours this way. And the next tab here is notifications. Um, you can basically set various notifications from SAB to be sent to you by email or one of these other clients here. I use Pushover myself and um, I like to have Pushover notify me when a download is complete. And the next tab here, scheduling. Basically you can add a schedule. I don't bother myself, but maybe if you're heavily into your online gaming and you want to make sure there's times where your bandwidth is fully available to your gaming or whatever, then you may want to set a schedule for that. And the RSS here, you can add RSS feeds for SAB to download from what it gets in the RSS feed. And this one here is special. Basically none of this really should be touched unless you have a special reason to do so. And the last tab is help, which takes you to the SAB wiki page. Okay, that's how you install and configure SAB NZBD in Unraid. But now let's just move on to how we integrate this into our web browser. Okay, so what you do to integrate SAB NZBD with Chrome is just click on to settings of Chrome and then go to extensions, scroll down to the bottom and click on get more extensions. And then just type in SAB Connect and then click Add to Chrome. And now you can see it's been added into the top here. So then click onto it and go to Extension Settings. And then here, this is where we put our connection details in. So here we get our address, which for me is my server address and then port 8080. So copy and paste that in. And then we're going to need the API key which I mentioned earlier. So we just need to paste the API key in here. And that's all the configuration we need to do. So we can just close this now and go back to our normal web page. And now we can open the SAB web page from the icon in the top right hand corner. And also this extension allows you to do one click downloading of NCB files from various indexing sites straight into SAB. So guys, there we have it and it's the end of another tutorial. I hope you guys found it useful and liked it. Well, if you did like it, then please hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos from me in the future, then why not subscribe to the channel? Whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, guys, I hope it's good. And I'll catch you all in the next video.